it can often be useful to take a function and be able to write it in one of its normal forms. In this example we're going to look at the function g here and write it in the disjunctive normal form. So one option to do this is to use the fact that 1 equals a or not a and then we can insert the missing variables. So let us write the function g of x equals x2 or x1 prime x3 prime and then we can rewrite this as 1 and x2 and 1 or x1 prime and 1 and x3 prime and now we're going to use this equality here so we're going to write this as so instead of 1 we're going to write x1 or x1 prime and then x2 and x3 or x3 prime and then we do the same thing for the second expression so we write this or x1 prime and x2 or x2 prime and x3 prime and now we use the distributive law to write this as x1 x2 x3 or x1 x2 x3 prime or x1 prime x2 x3 or x1 prime x2 x3 prime and this finishes the expansion of this part of our expression and now we expand the second part of the expression which will give us x1 prime x2 x3 prime or x1 prime x2 prime x3 prime and finally here we can note that these two terms are the same so we can just remove one of the terms so here we have our disjunctive normal form of our boolean function and we can identify our min terms here and see that this is the one that we call m7 this we call m6 this is the one we call m3 here we have m2 and this is the one that we call m0 another way of getting the disjunctive normal form for our expression would be to just look at the onset directly from the truth table so let us write the truth table for this function that we have here so we have three input variables and the function here we call g of x so we enumerate our different combinations for inputs in our truth table so we have eight different combinations and then we try to fill out the truth table so if we look at our expression here what do we have well if x2 is a 1 then the function will always output a 1 so we can immediately write 1 here 1 here 1 here and 1 here because these are the rows in our truth table where x2 is 1 the other possibility for a 1 is when x1 is a 0 and x3 is a 0 so that we have for this row here and we also have it for this row but this we already filled out as a 1 because x2 is a 1 here and the rest we can just fill out as zeros in this case the truth table here gives us exactly our min terms immediately so here we have the min term that we call m0 here is the one we call m2 here is the one we call m3 this is the one we call m6 and this is the one we call m7 so we can immediately write our disjunctive normal form for this boolean function as x1 prime x2 prime x3 prime or x1 prime x2 x3 prime or x1 prime x2 x3 or 
x1, x2, x3 prime, and finally the last mean term, which is represented by x1, x2, and x3. So here we just took another approach to write the disjunctive normal form of the function. And you can do the one that you feel most comfortable with, or the one that is easiest for the given problem. Now let us see how we can write a function in its conjunctive normal form instead. We have this function as we had before, and we're going to solve this by instead showing that our function g of x, that we previously found the disjunctive normal form for, can also be written as x1 prime or x2 and x2 or x3 prime. And we're going to do this by writing the function in the conjunctive normal form. And we're going to do this by here using the fact that 0 equals a and not a, or a and a prime. The expression here is the function written in the conjunctive form, but it's, it is not in the conjunctive normal form because we do not have all the variables in all our expressions. So let us start from this function. We're going to call this g hat of x because we do not know yet that it equals g of x. This is what we want to show. So we call it g hat of x and this will equal x1 prime or x2 and x2 or x3 prime. And this can be written as x1 prime or x2 or 0 and 0 or x2 or x3 prime. And now we can use the fact that 0 equals a and a prime. So we can write this as x1 prime or x2 or and then we have 0 which equals x3 and x3 prime and then similarly for the other expression we have here x1 and x1 prime or x2 or x3 prime and here again we use the distributive law to say that this is x1 prime or x2 or x3 and x1 prime or x2 or x3 prime and x1 or x2 or x3 prime and x1 prime and x2 and x3 prime. And again we have two expressions that are the same, so this one and this one equals, so we can just remove the last one here. So this expression here is our CNF, so our conjunctive normal form. And the terms we have here we previously denoted by capital M, and this was M4, this one is M5, and this one is M1. If you get confused by the numbering here, just remember that when we say that x1 or x2 or x3, that we call this m4, this comes from the fact that we took a vertex in our n-dimensional Boolean space, which was x1, x2 prime, x3 prime, and since this was zero, which we have for, for the max terms, we take the complement of this, and using the Morgan's law, this will be equal to x1 prime or x2 or x3. So it is perhaps easier to see where the zero, where the 4 comes from if you look at this expression. Remember now that what we wanted to show was that these two expressions are equal. So previously when we looked at the disjunctive normal form, we looked at the ones in our function and we got the mean terms m0, m2, m3, m6 and m7. 
So this we did previously for the min terms in the disjunctive normal form. So what we can do now is that we can compare the max terms that we have and the min terms that we have. Our max terms will point to zeros in the function and our min terms will point to ones in the function. And if we look at the indices here, we see that there are no two indices that are the same in the min terms and the max terms. So there are no uh, two indices that are both zeros and one in our truth table. And also we will cover all the possible indices. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are no overlaps between the min terms and max terms, that is zeros and ones in the truth table. And all the rows of our truth table have either a zero or a one. So from this we can see that the function g and the one that we now denoted g hat, they are equal.